Hi everyone, welcome to Johnny How To. And in this video, we're going to combine a couple different videos that I've done previously. One being an inner key, meaning a holdout mat. So when you're doing a green screen key, you don't have to worry about filling in the inside. Let me give you a quick example of that. So if I go ahead and do a key light key here really quick, I'll go ahead and plug this into the footage of Jonathan. By the way, he's uh, in the class, he was putting himself in this shot from Superbad. And if I go ahead and just do a very, very quick key here, I'll select the color picker for my key light node and control left click on the background. If I go ahead and darken down the background, you can see that there's a lot of transparency inside his mat, which will result with a problem in your final composite because if I, let's say, I'll go ahead and make a constant node, and I'm just pressing tab to pull up the uh, node dialog box there. If I go and view my original green screen, I'll double click my constant node, click the color picker and select control left click for that green. And I just go ahead and merge basically Jonathan's footage back on a green background again. What will happen is in certain areas it might be more obvious than others, but in the areas that his mat has transparency, you may start to see the background through him, like he's kind of like a ghost. So in this case, I'm not seeing that too much. Uh, sometimes it just depends on the particular shot in the background. If I brighten this up, you can start to see that I'm starting to see through to this very kind of light, light, light green now. So you can kind of see that we're getting some of that transparency. Sometimes it's very, very obvious, sometimes not so much. But so one video covered how you could just create a, basically a dynamic, mat or way to fill in the white areas so the person doesn't go ghostly on you. The other video was a animated garbage mat or a dynamically animated garbage mat where you're getting rid of all the rest of this green screen area that you need to get to black, but getting rid of it without having to animate it through a roto shape and having to animate over time so you don't have to do that. So. Those videos I will link to in this video down in the description, but this is going to be a quick run through on how you can do that on this particular shot so you can kind of see the two methods put together. So let me go ahead and start that off. And again, if I'm going a little bit too fast, please reference those other videos that I will link in the descriptions. All right, so we have our footage of Jonathan here. And we don't have too much motion blur, which is something we kind of want to think about a little bit at certain times when we're dealing with green screen. But let's go ahead and get started and go ahead and uh, kind of get him keyed off of this. So I'm going to start off with just a primat node. And this is going to just be a very harsh key. I'm going to try and get the green screen completely to black, meaning invisible, and get the character or the foreground completely to white, meaning visible. And I'm not going to worry about the hair detail or edge detail, things like that. This is just to help me in that outer matte creation and the inner matte creation in later step. And you don't have to use primat. I just have them using it because it's kind of quick and intuitive to get to that point. So I'm going to make sure I'm double clicked on primat to see its properties. I'm going to select one to view it in the viewer. The picker is already selected for me. So I'm going to go ahead and control left click on the background and I'll press A for alpha. And first off, I'm gonna pump up my luminance for my viewer just so I can see what I'm dealing with. And I'm gonna to go to the next option down with just clean background noise. I'm gonna hold down Control Shift or Command Shift if I'm on a Mac. I'm just gonna try and push everything to black in the background. And I wanna try and leave as little remnants of the background, those little dots as possible, uh, just because you'll see in a later step, those might start to get intensified or magnified in certain cases. If you don't get all of it, it's fine, but try and get as much as you can. Okay, so I think I got most of that. I can always go back and adjust that later if I need to. Now I'm gonna go the opposite direction on the luminance slider. I wanna make sure that his interior is completely white. So the next option down is clean foreground noise. I'm gonna go ahead and control, shift, and left click and drag to kind of fill the interior of his mat. And I'll go ahead and try and do this. And I haven't, I didn't do this in the other videos for the inner mat and the outer mat, but you probably want to go through the frame sequence because there's probably different spots where you might see stuff that you wouldn't see otherwise. Now I think this is the frames of his glasses. I'm going to double check really quick. Yeah, so that's not supposed to be filled in right there. But there might be spots as you go through the sequence where you might see stuff that you wouldn't see otherwise. So I'm starting to see more spots on the background. So I might want to go clean background noise. So basically go through your shot and try and clean it up as best as you can, just because it's going to save you a little bit more work later on. All right, so let's just call this good, even though I should probably go through a little bit 
more just to double check. I want to make sure that I'm not keeping this video too long. But if I go ahead and just click on random frames, you can see that this is kind of animating dynamically. I don't have much background pixels left and I don't really have much of his interior left. This might just be the frames of his glasses reflected in the green screen. Let me go ahead and take a look. If that is the case, I may or may not want to try and do that because if this is too much of a green like this green screen, which obviously is what it's reflecting, it might confuse the keyer, but I'll go ahead and try and see how it does. So if I go and darken this down just so I can see, and I do clean foreground noise. I go to control left click and drag. Okay, it looks like it handled it really well. It didn't bring back any of the background is what I was kind of looking to see if it did or not. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and name this primat node. I'll click on node, I'll just call this harsh key, and that's just what I've been calling in these tutorials, but it could just be rough key or whatever it is. And from here, I'm gonna go ahead and branch off and create both my inner key my, or my holdout mat, those are interchangeable terms, and my animated garbage mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and do my garbage mat first. And just so we can see this being used in a little bit, I'm gonna make a, a key light node and plug in my source. And this is going to be my first key that I'm actually gonna try and do something with. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'll call this, this will be my screen left head or something like that. So let's go ahead and say screen left head. Because even though this looks like a very evenly lit green screen and they did a really good job doing that, if I go and double click on this, click on the color picker for my key light node and go ahead and control alt left click or command option left click on a Mac, you can see that mathematically there's actually a great variation in the green screen and the blue screen. So, but what I wanna do here is I wanna create automated methods where I can get rid of the vast majority, 95% of the green screen and then also fill in his mat so he's not transparent in these areas. So how do I do that? So let's go and start off just looking at our harsh key right here. And after the primat node, I'm gonna go ahead and add, press tab and add an erode filter node. And for whatever reason, you type in erode filter, then it's called filter erode. But I'm gonna go ahead and make sure it's set to alpha for the channels. So I'll go ahead and select alpha and make sure I'm viewing this. I'm gonna go ahead and grow this outward, so it's going to get further out. So if I go positive, it's going to shrink in. If I go negative, it's gonna go outwards. And how far you need to go just depends on the resolution and the detail of the shot. But you can see as I go outwards, I'm seeing some of these like almost like little faint stars or whatever. And that is little teeny tiny pixels left over from when I was trying to key my background. So what you could do is go to your primat node, go ahead and try and do clean background noise, try and get all those. It can be really annoying over an entire frame range trying to get all of them, but do the best you can. But one way you can really kind of save yourself some of that trouble is you go ahead and in your, before you get to your garbage mat, so this is where I'm growing the mat out. So I'm gonna go and double click on this node, click on node, and I'll call this grow. Before I get to that one, I'm gonna go ahead and add another erode filter. I'm gonna go ahead and call this one shrink and the default setting of one is already taken care of my problem because you can see if I disable this B for disable it's gotten rid of those little specs or those pixels so that is set up for my out mat I can always go back and adjust how far out it is or in at any point in time but that's basically my out mat so I'm going to go ahead and drag down these two nodes right here that are making my out mat I'll select them press tab add a backdrop and I'll call these I'll double click on the title here and I'll call this animated G mat, no, animated garbage mat. Okay. So next step down here is I want to go ahead and create my in mat. So I'm going to go ahead and darken down my footage here. Actually, I don't need to do that with the prime mat. I'll go ahead and just create another erode filter. I'm going to go ahead and plug this guy in. And instead of growing it out, I'm going to shrink the mat inwards. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I'm on this node. It's double clicked. I'll make sure that my channel is set to alpha and I'll go ahead and adjust it to where it is shrinking inwards. And uh, the only thing you need to kind of pay attention to and be careful with on your in mats is that if there's particular fingers like here, sometimes you'll get these odd kind of webbing happening around the finger. So I'll leave it on this frame for now and if that comes up, I'll point that out. But so basically I've shrunk that in and that's probably a little bit too much but I've shrunk it in to where it's going to fill in those areas. And you can kind of see what I'm meaning by, I'm probably gonna get webbing between the fingers here, but we'll go ahead and see if that happens when we're actually doing this. All right, so let's go ahead 
and uh, I'm going to add a blur at the bottom of both of these just because you don't want to have razor sharp edges. So I'll add a blur. I just want to blur just the alpha channel. Press B for blur on this one as well, just the alpha channel. And I'll add a backdrop to this one as well. And I will call this holdout mat or in mat. All right, so I don't know what settings I need to use in these yet until I'm actually applying them, but let's go ahead and take a look. So there's two ways you can apply this. With the key light node, you have your in mat and your out mat. This is your in mat. This is the animated garbage mat or, or out mat. You can plug these directly into the node, but in case you're using a different node other than key light or in other software, sometimes the same nodes, even if there's key light infusion or after effects, something like that, sometimes they don't have the same inputs. I'm gonna go ahead and do it the other way around. At least I'll go and do that for the animated garbage mat. So I'll use the regular way built in for the in mat and I'll do the other way for the garbage mat. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this guy down a little bit. And for my in mat, I'll just use my in mat right here, plug this into my blur. I'll view it, and I haven't adjusted these blurs yet, but I'll adjust that later on. In the key light node, once I double click on it at the bottom, there is an in matte component. I'm going to go in and set that. If I darken this down so I can see the transparency, I'm going to set this to alpha. And you can see immediately that's filled in the bulk of his interior. Now, I, I want to go to my filter road here and adjust and make sure I'm not filling in areas that I shouldn't be filling in. So if I'm starting to fill in in between his fingers or parts of his hair detail and things like that, then I need to back off on it. But that's basically the idea for that. And I don't feel like I'm filling in too much, so I think I'm fine for the most part. And remember, I do have this dropped all the way down, so if I look at it normally, it's gonna look even better. But I still have all this green screen left over that I don't want to worry about, and that's where the animated garbage mat or the out mat comes into play. So again, I could plug in out mat. I'll just do that really quick so you can see. I can plug in the out mat, and under the out mat component, I can go ahead and choose. If I choose alpha, it's going to be backwards. It's cutting out my character, so I want to do alpha inverted. And now you can see I've gotten rid of 95% of the green screen, and all I have to deal with now is just the stuff right along the edges of the character. And if I want to get rid of even more, as long as I don't cut into the hair detail or the other parts of the character, I can go ahead and continue to adjust the filter road until I get the spot that I want. And the reason I added that blur is because, see how this is kind of a sharp line? If I put that on the background, you might notice that if there's a little bit of the blue screen or green screen left over. But if you blur your edges, it tends to bleed in and just kind of merge together a little bit more smoothly. And the same thing goes for your in mat. So my in mat, you can see, is very sharp right here, but if I go ahead and blur it just ever so slightly, and maybe I shouldn't have this turned down quite as much. There we go, this is probably a better, better example. If I go ahead and just turn this down, you can see there's a little bit of a line here. If I blur it just slightly, it starts to feed in there a little bit more smoothly. And so now, I have basically an in mat and an out mat. And remember, I would want to do multiple keys if I was really doing this shot for the, the, the screen right, the, the head, the body, and everything like that so I can get an ideal key because you can see right here, it looks pretty clean. There's a little bit of gunk left over, especially if I pump it up. But it might look fine against the background, whereas here, obviously, this would show up against the background. So I still need to split this out in different keys. That's a whole separate process for a different set of videos. But as far as this video goes, now you can see really quickly how you can combine together an animated garbage mat and an in mat together or a holdout mat together to get the best result. And just so I can make sure I'm covering both, I'm going to go ahead and turn off this out mat and unplug it here. The other way you could do this, and again, not all the nodes like Primat and everything have this in mat and out mat inputs, is if you want to use your out mat, you just say you only want to keep what's inside this white area, right? So that's your animated garbage mat that animates over time. You don't have to keyframe it or anything with a roto shape, but you only want to keep what's inside that mat. So after your keyer node, all you do is you add an in node and say, I only want to keep A that is inside of B. So wherever it's white in the B input, it's going to keep it. So if I go ahead and view this, here it has all this gunk left over from the green screen still. If I use this in node, now it's gotten rid of it. It's the exact same thing as if I use this out mat input, but again, just all the keyer nodes don't always have these inputs, so it's good to know how you can do that the other way around. 
All right, so again, make sure if I went too fast on the in mat or the garbage mat or hole up mat and all that stuff, if I went too fast, there's dedicated videos, basically about the same length as this one, that go into detail just on these two. But uh, now you can see these together, how they can help you get to where you want to go a lot more quickly. There's still a lot of steps that we do here, but we're along the way with minimal effort and it dynamically updates over time. Again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next Johnny How To.